All right, I'm here with Luke from Luke's Lab, and he's going to tell us about some of his printers and products that he has over here. Um, so the main thing that he's got is this gigantic StableBot printer, um, but he's also got some other bits and bobs around here that might be interesting to talk about. So Luke, what do you do? I describe Luke's Laboratory as a curated shop. So when you come to my storefront online or whatever, you see a much smaller selection of products that you would see from some other distributors. The reason for that is I tend to stick to stuff that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and that I trust daily. So like uh, if I sell a product, you know that I have it in my own machines. Transitioning over, uh, I have here the, the stable bot, which is uh, really the culmination of all those little pieces coming together in one. So you can buy the same part, the same orbiter hot end or orbiter extruder on here, or the same servos that I use on my own machines and put it on your machine as well, or buy the complete platform. It looks like it's printing right now, so let's take a, a peek. It's moving Sweet. pretty fast. Yeah, so this is still actually warming up. Uh, we still have a bit more performance to get out of it. Uh, it doesn't even have input shaping turned on right now. So this is printing a glass-filled ASA um, that was provided by a friend just over the corner there. And uh, we're just uh, getting the first couple prints in. It uses a uh, Slice Magnum Plus hot end right now, and it uses CPAP cooling. On the back is a uh, CAN bus tool board, the Hubbard, um, which uh, does all the controls. Greatly simplifies wiring. And then for bed leveling, it uses the Beacon 3D eddy current scanner. So it can generate a 500 by 500 mesh in under two minutes. It's pretty, pretty crazy tech, honestly. Like I'm, I'm still flabbergasted by it every time. Yeah, so this is much larger than a lot of the 3D printer offerings out there. How big do you make your printers? So these go all the way up to 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 or any size below that. I customize each printer to each customer's needs. So if you have a really long and narrow part, I can make you that exact printer to get those out the door as fast as possible. I mean, this, this tube here is like filled with pressurized air. So uh, why would you want to do that over like a traditional part cooling fan or like just put really big fans on there? So the reason you do it is when you have high flow, high volume printing, you want a lot of air and you want it all blowing over your print. So to do that, you need to mount a really big fan to your tool head, which isn't the best place for a fan. So instead, you put it in the back, attached to the printer. Mine actually recirculates the air from inside the chamber to make sure it's not too cold, too warm, or injecting anything funky into your print. Um, and then it blows it through the tube on the, on the top there. So I get about 30 CFM, and that is through all that ducting as well. So it's a lot of air. You can feel the CPAP hose, and it's actually like really warm. Exactly, because it's drawing it right from in here. And then uh, that's just like, you know, all the wiring and stuff. Um, but I saw something over here that we haven't talked about. This, uh, this thing. Yeah, so this, uh, this runs Clipper. So most people run Clipper on a Raspberry Pi, but with all the chip shortages and all the availability, um, it actually is the same cost to purchase an old kiosk PC that has like an old i5, um, eight gigs RAM, 500 gig SSD. Again, same price, much more processing power, and it does all the same things. It makes them a lot easier to support. It even comes with a three-year warranty. I thought this was pretty interesting. This is actually something that uh, a good friend of mine, Provoke the Degree, also known as uh, Boxy, has, uh, has done. So, fun fact about our heaters. A lot of us glue it on and we seal it on with the RTV just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Well, over time, that may and has failed in the past. And so if you want to either guarantee reliability of your heater pad, make it last longer, make sure you can't have any failures where it falls off and starts melting other things, or if you want to go higher temp, like 150 to 200 to maybe 250 C, instead of using adhesive, you want to clamp it in between your, your bed surface, which is the top surface right here, put the heater in, and then clamp it with an aluminum plate that will hold it in place, keep all the heat in the spots where you need it, and allow you to hit those higher temps and much safer operation. And instead of having the heater or the thermistor on the back of it, you just drill it into the aluminum where you're actually using the temperature instead of on the back of the pad. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so what are some of your favorite things? This is like Oprah's favorite things, but it's Luke's favorite things instead. So uh, let's see what you got. So I guess some of the products that I am Prob probably the favorite of is, is really starts with the Hubbard, right? So this is one of the first, I think it is the first CAN bus based board for Clipper. Um, in the middle of the, the shortage, I think in 2021, I was the only person to be able to get these things yeah, made. Yeah, I couldn't find them online. Someone told me about those and I'm like, yeah, that sounds really cool. Where can I buy one? It was a really hard thing for a really long time. 
But thankfully, I, I found a, a manufacturer who was able to get them made for us, and uh, that's, that's what really started a lot of the other uh, companies making these things. So um, I use them day to day on my printers. It makes wiring custom lengths and custom sizes a lot easier than making a harness for every single unique printer. So that's, that's a really big thing there. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, we see them everywhere, right? But it's the LED sticks. Everyone loves LEDs. I don't have any on this printer right now, but uh, it, it, really, it really went from a simple RGBW stick here to uh, diversity on a stick, which is four different kinds of LEDs all on the same stick. So we have the, uh, the standard addressable LEDs, we have white, we also have UV and IR. What do you use that for? Like, uh, put it in the printer? It's a lot of fun because some of the filament that I actually stock. So we're in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin here, and we have a wonderful local-ish filament manufacturer, Fusion Filaments. And one of the, their favorite things to do is take a really fun filament and then put UV fluorescence in it, or I forget the name, but the, it glows when you shine UV on it. So. Uh, this material here is printed in radioactive orange, and uh, when you shine UV lights on it, it'll glow. I mean, that's, that's just a lot of fun. Well, thanks, Luke, for showing me around. Have a good rest of your show. I will, you too. Thank you.